Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Sorry for the late start. Uh, we're beginning the live show. Uh, okay, so please uh, refresh your browsers uh, or whatever you need to do. I'm very sorry for the late start. We had some issues for those uh, coming for the first time to the show. Um, uh, first of all, I apologize. We <laughs> do start on time every morning. Uh, starting almost 20 minutes late is not something that happens. Uh, I don't know exactly what the problem was, but after restarting the computer, everything is solved. So good morning, everybody. Again, sorry for the late start. This is the live market open for April 7th. It's, uh, it's uh, Thursday. Uh, okay. So, and yeah, I'll continue the show. Uh, we'll do the usual uh, more or less 45 minutes. So we'll finish a bit later today, okay? Because the late start again, I apologize. Anyway, it's Thursday, April 7th. I'm Yochai Lam for Expansion Market Movers Podcast. For those who don't know me, uh, doing the show as usual for FX Street. So we'll talk about recent developments in markets, charts and levels the next 24 hours. And uh, of course, your questions. So even though we started late, we'll still, of course, have time for your questions. That's the most important part. If you cannot see the chat box, if you're only watching the video, please go to the chat on this page, tlk.io slash fx3 hyphen forks hyphen live hyphen video. Okay, what's going on in markets? Well, basically, sell the dollar now, ask questions later. Total sell-off of the greenback it began before the Fed minutes, continued afterwards. In addition, nobody's really afraid of the Bank of Japan, not the ECB, not everybody, anybody, okay? Um, we'll, uh, let's just talk quickly about what happened yesterday. We had very few events. Oil inventories showed a drawdown, which has strengthened the price of oil, even though it was not unexpected, oil prices went up. The big event uh, of the day was the Fed meet meeting minutes, okay? Remember, we had, um, uh, what was going on in markets was on March 16th. Th these are the me me meeting minutes for March 16th. We had a dovish statement from the Fed, the dollar fell, then we had hawkish statements from a few of Yellen's colleagues, the dollar strengthened. Then Yellen spoke again and killed the dollar last week. We saw some attempts to recover, but today, towards the public, uh, sorry, yesterday, towards the publication of the Fed minutes, it didn't uh, it didn't help, the dollar resumed its falls. What, what actually came out in the minutes, which didn't stop the falls and they resumed, of course, later on, we had uh, generally dovish stuff. We know now that not only Esther George, but also another hawk, maybe Loretta Mester, maybe someone else, voted for rate hike in March, okay? Um, yeah. So uh, that should have been bullish, okay? That should have been hawkish. But they don't have any rush. The, most people, most Fed members do want to wait. Uh, they are acknowledging the improvement in the U.S. economy, not really worried about what's going on at home. Even inflation took sort of a back seat in comparison to previous statements. But the, what took the front seat, what, was, uh, what stood out is the dovish uh, worries about the world. They are very, very worried. They do not acknowledge all the steps that China took or the ECB or the Bank of Japan or other emerging economies. They are really, really worried, okay? Uh, I mean, that's what they say. So this was dovish. It didn't, it was maybe slightly hawkish with the two who wanted a hike and, but not, basically not enough. The markets, uh, the market passed for a bit. So the US dollar uh, did rise just a bit in reaction to the minutes, but it was more sort of a dead cat bounce. Um, yeah, we, we did hear overnight from Peter, uh, sorry, this morning from Peter Pratt of the ECB. There's an ECB conference going on that measures could be calibrated, or in a simpler words, that the ECB could do more. Uh, doesn't seem to stop the euro. Also during the night, Kuroda, the governor of the Bank of Japan, said that the Bank of Japan could do more, and could add more stimulus. But uh, markets are basically calling uh, Kuroda's bluff, and uh, just, just let's look at the charts. Let's start with dollar yen. This is, uh, we talked about, uh, 111 is being a line in the sand that was broken. We had a dip under this line uh, two days ago on Tuesday, and then we had some kind of a recovery. But yesterday the pair fell once again under 
110 and during the Asian session it's a clear trend okay this is hardly even a dead cat bounce and this is quite a spectacular crash um, yeah almost 1% only today currently at 108.78 the low has been 108.64 I'm not sure that's um, it's gonna be the low for a long time uh, anyway, were the levels last seen? Yeah, the same time in October of 2014. Let me remind you that then the Bank of Japan did have more influence on markets, did manage to surprise everybody with the second round of QE and the yen crashed. Dollar yen then made the big leap above 110. And uh, in a matter of a few uh, months or so, it already reached uh, 120, okay? um and since then it's been trading on high ground so we're reversing a move that began a year and a half ago okay at the end of october 2010. a question here um why would anybody in his own right mind own negative rates currencies when risk sentiment is up well uh it's still a safe haven these uh, currencies it's still for some investors better than uh, uh trading stocks some Portfolio managers are just obliged to buy uh, negative rates currencies, negative rates uh, um, bonds. Okay, so uh, risk sentiment is up and down. It's not not very stable. Okay, so um, it's still something you know that the Japanese government will pay you back, even though Japan Japan's public debt is way above two hundred percent to GDP. But these are still considered safe haven bonds. At some point, with the negative rate, um, it'll be safer and uh, just keeping the cash, okay, uh, under the mattress. But at this point, uh, keeping the money in the bank still has advantages. Anyway, with dollar yen, where the lows last seen in um, October of 2010, uh, sorry, 2014, this is the big story of the day. Euro dollar, I think it's beginning here. The ECB does have some uh, act, some power. Okay, so we heard these comments from Peter Pratt. Let me see if I can pick up more comments. But anyway, we reached a high of 114.54, just under that 114.60 line I mentioned. Okay, um, which was the post. Um, why doesn't that appear? Yeah, let me add this line. Well, too many lines here, I know, but. Anyway, this is the post uh, QE high, the big recovery of the euro in the middle of 2015. This line was touched again, and it's also a thousand pips above the multi decade low. Okay. Um, uh, did Kuroda and Ragi read the same book, How to Weaken Your Currency for Dummies? They wrote the book. Uh, they both had more success with this in the past. At least now, I think uh, Draghi has a bit more success. The markets are absolutely calling the bluff of uh, the ECB. Uh, sorry, the Bank of Japan. Okay, more headlines from this conference in of the ECB. I know it's Constancio talking to the European Parliament. He said they will do whatever is required to pursue the price stability objective. So the ECB, the European Central Bank, is clearly raising the rhetoric this morning and not happy with the weak, with the strength of the euro. Okay. Um, Review, uh, no, regular fiscal policy. Oh, yeah. And they're also beating the same drum, which I think is correct, that governments should do more. Okay. Uh, bigger words came from Peter Pratt uh, that said you could recalibrate monetary policy. Okay. So I think he's speaking in Lisbon. Anyway, uh, any, anyway, the ECB is managing, at least for now, at least. Yeah, a lot of lines on that chart. Um, when we move to the hourly chart, you can see it's already becoming a bit of modern art. Anyway, um, we are seeing um, euro dollar retreat from the highs. Uh, 114.10 is uh, some kind of uh, support because it kept the pair. 113.35 is much stronger support. 114.16 and 115 are higher lines, okay? Um, the uh, Swiss re is not parking with negative rates and has been buying gold so far. They have about 400 ounces parked. Okay, I didn't know that. It's a big company, insurance company, right? 
Anyway, uh, they're buying gold. Perhaps that also supports the price of gold, although it's mostly speculation and not buying of real uh, physical metal. Anyway, um, your dollar is reacting just a bit, okay, to these movements. Pound dollar. The pound has been the weakest link. Also, this morning it doesn't look so good. Uh, it is falling, uh, but yesterday with this huge weakness of the dollar and also before and after the Fed minutes, it did manage to bounce from the lows. And these were lows. It broke under this triple bottom, if you wish, or at least double bottom of 140.50. Well, one support, resistance, more or less support, support, support. Now it made a move under this line, okay? But it did bounce because uh, this race in this race to the bottom uh, um, between the pound and the US dollar, we had a bounce. Remember, the pound has a lot of troubles that the steel crisis, Brexit fears, and the Panama Papers uh, implicating David Cameron all have political weight. All <clears throat> mean trouble for the British government. Um, and this will continue for at least two more months until we have, uh, two and a half months until we have the results of the referendum. Anyway, uh, at the moment, there's a lot of pressure on the pound, so the pound is not a winner here. Um, but at least against the US dollar, it did not fall under 140. It did manage to survive the second test. Okay, uh, dollar yen, we talked about that. Uh, dollar CAD, uh, taking some, yeah, taking advantage also of this weakness of the US dollar, uh, went back to the previous range of 130 to 130.80. Okay, um, it also enjoys, of course, higher oil prices. Oil is a bit high on the day. Uh, already traded above $38 in WTI crude oil. Anyway, the Canadian dollar uh, enjoyed also the inventory data and, of course, the weakness of the greenback. Uh, so we didn't have a fall under 130, but we're uh, one range lower on dollar CAD. Aussie dollar, uh, well, it did recover, it did take advantage of this weakness of the US dollar. Um, so it did bounce from the lows. Um, the risk of sentiment sort of faded away. It did not manage to break above 76.40 here. Okay, so this is uh, in this relatively choppy chart, we're seeing the Aussie dollar behave in a better manner. Uh, now it's sliding once again this morning, but not uh, all in all did take advantage of the US dollar's weakness. Kiwi dollar is doing better. Well, it did manage to battle its way above the 68.20 line, which worked as a separator of ranges. It did never went too far. It's uh, basically crisscrossed this line. And next resistance, 68.80. This week we had a better than expected. Well, we had a rise in milk prices, which was Kiwi positive in general. And Kiwi is showing us some strength, some resilience, and uh, not fading weight. Dollar Swiss. Uh, this certainly reflects the weakness of the US dollar and also um, the strength of the euro against the US dollar, basically a mirror image. So we did have a fall to 95.20, now we're at 95.40, sort of battling uh, what was previously uh, support, stronger support, uh, yeah, I guess 95, a rounder number, and 96.40 is resistance, but um, Swiss franc basically mirroring dollar Swiss mirroring uh, euro dollar, here we're seeing basically uh, not much change on the day on Euro Swiss, less than 20 pips. It's a bit on lower ground, but it's a, hugging the 109 level, and, and beforehand it was above 109. But basically, no movements here. I can't say I see any, or I haven't heard of any direct intervention by the BOJ, uh, sorry, by the SNB, by the Swiss National Bank. But um, what's going on here is um some kind of uh well yeah, these currencies are fitting very closely together euro pound here we see the strength of the euro relative strength of the euro against the weakness of the pound uh race to the bottom between the pound and the dollar and the euro is not in this game and we're seeing even higher ground 81 cents um for People making their living here in Barcelona, making their money in pounds, it's not so good, and I know quite a few of those. Uh, so 
Anyway, uh, 8808 is the current level. 8110, quite a significant rise. Uh, let's try to add lines to this chart to see what's next. Oh, I already have old lines here. So the next line is 81.50 and then 82.20. These worked in the past uh, around uh, the early, the beginning, around the beginning of 2014. So we're now in the pound at levels last seen. Well, the middle of 2014, almost two years at these levels quite a big when we talk about the pounds weakness it's not only against uh, it's reflected better against the euro and also against the the yen let's jump to dollar yen big breakout um under 154.60 okay um uh, sorry yeah 154.60 was support for the pair right here okay right here in uh, the end towards the end of February. Since then, we had quite a rally. Um, now it's back down. We did have a battle with this line. It did work as support, but only for a few hours, 154.60. And boom, now we're basically uh, scratching the bottom of the barrel just as we speak, falling under 153. Let's zoom out to the daily chart and see that with uh, pound yen, we're at the lowest levels since August 2003. Okay, so this is also quite a big fall for the pair. Uh, should do some spring cleaning on these charts. Anyway, very, very strong support there just at 147.70 and perhaps uh, some support at uh, right here. 151.80, okay. Anyway, big, big crash. Euro yen here, we're seeing the strength of the Japanese yen. Okay, um, the pair isn't any big breakout, but it is certainly lower. Okay, well, nearly 1% on the day, uh, losing 124. The next support line is 123. And uh, oil, oil, uh, well, did recover on these... Um, Better inventories, we had a first hint from the uh, API figure on Tuesday night, and then uh, yesterday, Wednesday afternoon, we had the crude oil inventories. Now we're back to these levels between uh, 37.60 and 80 and 38.30. Okay, anyway, uh, sort of a recovery of sorts for oil prices. All right, uh, I see if here a few questions. Uh, wouldn't Brexit be worse for the euro than the pound? Uh, that's a good question. I think you have a good point there because, well, in terms of trade, uh, the, the eurozone or the EU in general, the other 27 countries in the EU, or if you count only the 19 countries in the eurozone, are bigger together, are bigger economy, it's a bigger economy than the British one, okay? And in terms, well, regarding trade, the UK is smaller, and the EU also has agreements with other places, so the UK would lose more than the Eurozone. However, um, this is also a big, a huge political event, okay? Even if the UK reaches a new deal with the outside the EU, which is certainly possible, and this deal could be good, the actual departure of such a big and important country in the global scene, the world's sixth largest or seventh largest economy, from uh, this body, sort of the EU European Union is going all the time towards integration. And when such a big and important country, even though it doesn't participate in many things, not in Shenzhen, not in, in, um, in the Euro and, and opts out of other stuff, but the fact that it's uh, one country leaving, I think for the first time and not joining, uh, this has, huge political implications. This could be the beginning of the end of the European Union. It uh, shows the lack of integration, okay, and it could be in the long run more damaging. More questions here. Uh, uh, well, we have a chart here. Let me... For those of you joining now, sorry again for the late start, we will continue uh, to a later hour. Okay, thanks for this chart. 
So three drive divergence on the hourly. Yeah, okay, so it's a nice trend there. Uh, yeah, the euro dollar took its time in consolidation and, uh, and now it's moving to the upside. I'm sure many people don't like it and we'll see uh, Draghi speaks later on. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Jim, for the chart. Uh, Lucas says, confused market pricing in zero hikes this year. Minute said fairly clearly the very high chance of June high. So later market will have to reprice unless they just don't believe a word they say any longer. Um, yeah, no, I'm not, not hung over. The computer perhaps was hung over. Uh, anyway, uh, referring to your question regarding the hikes in the Federal Reserve, well, as we speak, your dollar is sliding even further. Let's see if we have, I'll, I'll answer your question shortly. Just I'll try to catch a few headlines because I see here a significant fall. No, nothing new, but um, looks like the US dollar is trying to claw back at least against the euro, uh, which is now flat on the day. And against the pound, we're seeing a resumption of the fall. Even against the yen, it's no, against, sorry, <laughs> against the yen, it's uh, not even a dead cat bounce. Uh, but yeah, so the US dollar is looking a bit better as we speak this morning, but uh, not so much. So you were asking about uh, hikes. Yeah, um, you could interpret what we've seen yesterday. That, uh, I mean, I'll put on my hawkish cap for a second. You could say uh, the Fed in March decided not to act too, did want to hike. But they did have a big, big debate about hiking in April, okay? And if they were talking about hiking in April, that could give us a hint that they will act in June. But the level of the worries about the global economy, um, the fact that the vast majority still with Yellen, with other doves, I mean, most of them are doves and do not want to hike, that stood out. Uh, okay, so if you look at, uh, I'll show you in a second, um, What's priced in bond markets? We don't see. We didn't see any real change. Okay, there's still a chance of a hike in June. All right, I don't rule that out. We'll need to see a few things. We'll need to see better than expected figures. We have in April the first uh, release of GDP growth for the first quarter. Expectations are for it to be low. The Fed will have it one day before us. So. Maybe that will be okay. And then we'll have developments in early May and early June, especially <clears throat> non from perils. So there is a chance. I'm still, I still believe there is a chance, okay? Um, once they're a bit less worried about the global economy, but at the moment, uh, for the shorter term, markets just uh, don't believe, think, still think, yes, the Fed is over-optimistic. And also, um, well, not so sure about the US economy, okay? Uh, growth was looked a bit better in Q4, but looks a bit worse in Q1. Very mediocre, very frustrating growth. I don't think in general it's a really bad thing. Slower growth means a lower chance of a bubble that ends up with a big bust. Okay, but um, uh, anyway, um, that's situation right here. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, Sandra tells GM uh, dollar index showing a strong bullish candle on the hourly chart supports your look. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll just remind. Thanks also, Sinatra, for sharing the chart. Um, I would add that the US dollar index uh, is a relatively, I mean, not so updated instrument. I mean, you can trade it, of course, in the sense that it reflects a lot of. Um, uh, most of it is just the euro, okay? It was composed when, uh, before the big boom of the Asian um, economies, and it consisted originally of many European economy, uh, European uh, currencies, and now it's um, European economies, and now it's, uh, well, just mostly the euro. That's why you see this kind of connection, okay? All right, so thanks for that. Anyway, interesting charts. Mm -mm -mm. 
Yeah, Sinatra, he thinks people are starting to take a second look at the minutes. Yeah, again, you can look at the minutes as uh, they could still say in April, listen, like they did in October, if you remember. In October, the Fed told us that in towards the next meeting, hint, hint, wink, wink, uh, we're going to consider this and that and that and this. That was telling us we're going to move, okay? So we might get that in April. Uh, I also think that uh, situation, economic situation in the U.S. is okay. The global economy also is not really crashing. I mean, there are bad, there, there's bad stuff going on, but not all is lost, okay? Anyway, um, for the Japanese yen, nothing seems to matter, okay? <laughs> Japanese yen is just defying the Bank of Japan, the Ministry of Finance in, in Tokyo, just going on. Okay, more questions, uh, comment here by Ed. Uh, you know your voice. I voiced why no Brexit, but the derivatives exposure from the unknown Brexit. Low probability. Ask an expert can never explain what it is. It's certainly possible volume. Don't forget Germany's Deutsche Bank has derivative exposure bigger than the US debt. Uh, who and how? It was valued unknown, probably huge. So think. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not aware of this derivative story. Um, I'll just say that, uh, yeah, there is, I mean, all these derivatives, all this extreme uh, betting, gambling, and um, you know, it was part of what caused the big financial crisis, the GFC, the great financial crisis. Specifically, I also think Brits will remain with the devil. They know the EU and, and hopefully try to change it from within then uh, leave, although there are, of course, reasons for both uh, sides. Um, we've heard in the G20 that uh, uh, many agreed that uh, Brexit is a danger to the global economy. So it turned from uh, the Tory party trying to keep uh, UKIP on the sidelines from an internal and, and, and right-wing Tories inside and turned from an internal uh, political issue in the UK into a global issue. Um, anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I also think they'll say with the devil they know, but you never know. Um, there are many high-ranking conservatives uh, campaigning for Brexit. Okay, anyway, um, <clears throat> Jake says, you're now chasing the pound and race to the downside. JPY intervention soon. We could have an intervention by the Bank of Japan, but now they're trying. They would, they would be smarter, I think, to intervene when after the yen stabilizes. Okay, if they try to intervene now, it'll be like catching a falling knife. I'm sure you've heard this expression. It can only damage the reputation. Uh, there's sort of this one-sided move. Of course, they could intervene. Of course, there could be a bounce just by profit taking, stop loss hunting. You name it. Okay. So I think they would rather intervene after after the big fall, after some stability, and then they'll help push it back up again. I'm talking about dollar again. Um, so far, they've been defied in the past few months so many times by markets, so maybe they should let it go, uh, at least for now. Uh, regard, we are seeing some profit taking on, on the sell-off of the US dollar, maybe rethinking of the minutes, maybe just natural profit taking. Remember, uh, we're still on very uh, low ground for the dollar against the euro, uh, again, uh, especially against the yen uh, for the pound. Yeah, uh, currently holding on to 140.50, the line, the triple bottom that it broke under yesterday. Anyway, another question here. If Brexit happens, would dollar yen be the number one pair or would China try to step up in and fill the void. Uh, number one pair in terms of trading. Uh, I think your dollar will still remain number one pair. Dollar yen is number will remain number two. Okay, um, we would need a breakup of the eurozone in order for something like that. Anyway, dollar yen in terms of immediate. Uh, I mean, where's the trade? And the Brexit, yeah, buying the yen would be a good trade because it's still the safe haven currency. 
and the euro could suffer more, okay? Uh, another chart here by Luca, bullish divergence, building intraday in euro pound. Okay, thanks for sharing, Luca. Um, so, um, I love the bottom chart. Yeah, perhaps this is what we're seeing now at the moment. Anyway, your yen uh, fell quite a lot. The yen is now the king of the hill. Okay. And another chart here from Jake was short from last night on this. Uh, yeah, let's share it on the screen as well. Oh, uh, that's a nice short. Yeah, uh, he made some profit here. Yeah, sell at PB zone. Odd yen. Yeah, the yen is a risk uh, currency. Yeah, that's quite a chart. Thanks, Jake. Uh, the yen uh yeah made some nice profit there looks looks like a quite a nice chart we often overlook uh crosses i mean i always talk about the major ones but don't focus on uh, other ones but aussie against the yen a classic risk on risk off trade uh yeah had quite a spectacular crash yesterday mostly just the strength of the yen yeah it's a fundamental reason yeah, that's a lot of sushi. <laughs> yeah, some good tasting. Sh I know Australians uh, like sushi, so uh, yeah, now it'll cost them a bit more if they go to Japan. That means um, that is. Um, so yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, thanks everybody for sharing all the great charts. You can of course learn from each other. Um, okay, so I answered a lot of questions talked about what happened yesterday um, let's talk about the events for today oh this is before that I want to show you this uh, remember yesterday we talked about 80% chance against the rate hike in June now it's around 82 okay we went from 80.3 right here to 82.1 okay so basically the market says eh, then yeah the, the the Fed is dovish, or if it even if it isn't really dovish, we don't believe them. And uh, yeah, again, a rate hike is priced in only for December, November. That's the week of the general elections, the presidential elections. Still no chance, of course, in December. Fifty percent, a bit more, fifty-seven percent for a hike. Okay, but even for September, which is a press conference, well, too close to the elections. 60% against the rate hike. More comments here. I took almost the same losses against the NZD and the US dollar. Okay, so the Australian dollar was also weak. Let's just take a look at that. Uh, for instance, Aussie against NZD. Yeah, a bit lower. Well, it climbed up the stairs and fell down the elevator. You think that would be the expression for what's going on this morning? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about events for uh, for today. Ah, as we speak, your dollar is above one fourteen. So <clears throat> today we have on the agenda well, light US uh, light European morning at half past twelve GMT. I was talking about this last week, but had it was wrong on the calendar. So it comes out today, the ECB meeting minutes. As always, they take their sweet, sweet time and release it one month after the event. It's not so relevant. Remember that in that ECB meeting in March, it was a very dramatic meeting. March 10th, we had the ECB announce, beat their own expectations. They announced an enlargement of QE from 60 to 80 billion, more euro printing. They cut rates, they cut the negative deposit rates from minus 30 to minus 40, and, this, and they surprised by cutting the lending rate from 0.05 to a flat zero. 
they announced two, uh, sorry, 40 LTROs, that means uh, new programs of lending money to banks in order for banks to lend this money to the real economy. And at, at current interest rates, it means they actually pay banks to lend money out. Okay, so, and what else? Did, ah, they're now buying also corporate bonds and the works. They threw the kitchen sink. However, Draghi said that uh, they're sort of done for now. And that allowed the bounce. It was that triple bottom or double bottom at 10820. And boom, we shot higher. Okay, it was another disappointment for Draghi. Um, so now we'll have the meeting minutes from this. We know that the German Bundesbank, led by Jens Weidmann, they uh, supported more measures, but not so far, not going that far. So we'll see how divided the ECB is. How what their views are on inflation? We heard from Peter Pratt of the ECB that if they had not acted as they had acted in 2015, your, the eurozone would have been in deep deflation. Let's see if these minutes reflect any uh, hint of future action or not. Okay, uh, it isn't such a big market mover usually, but it can surprise. Okay, half past 12 GMT. We have uh, U.S. jobless claims. And that's expected, and that's like every week. Last time it was slightly disappointing. And this time, um, it's expected to remain, well, to slide a bit from 276 to 270. And the same time we have building permits in Canada, not a big market mover. At some point later on, uh, well, around 1 GMT, 1.30, 2, 2.30, we don't have the exact hour, okay? Sorry for that, but I looked also in other calendars and other sort of resources. We don't have the exact timing of, um, um, yeah, um, of Draghi's speech, but it's an important one. It's the ECB conference. We already heard from his colleagues. They were sort of the warm up for the big show, uh, the Draghi show. Let's see what he says about inflation, about the global economy about growth. I'm sure he will tell governments to do more, perhaps up the rhetoric. Um, it, it was always telling, I mean, the ECB was always telling governments to do more structural reforms. Everybody can agree that uh, less red tape is good for everybody. But recently, he also said things that are more politically charged. Uh, guys, open up your pockets, especially Germany, and start spending. Okay, uh, in the more, not in these words, in more gentle words, but uh, I think he'll maybe today up the ante a bit more. Um, and let's see if he talks about further action on, on, uh, from the ECB. But the ECB has really done a lot. Um, at 8 GMQ, we have US consumer credit, um, worth noting. But for those of you that are up at night, uh, there's a conference of, um, of four, EC, four Fed chairs okay janet yellen the one that uh, her predecessor ben bernanke the one before him alan greenspan was nearly 20 years in office and even the one before him paul volcker okay the one with the picture of the cigar that hit inflation on its head and triggered recession in the early 80s so anyway of course the current chair is the most important speaker there and she'll speak at half past nine let's see if she goes dovish once again, um, remember she was she spoke quite a few times recently, so maybe her move her words will not be as important as Draghi's words today. Anyway, Euro dollar is the pair to watch. That speech is scheduled for half past nine GMT. What happens usually is that uh, this is a very liquid hour in markets. Okay. Anyway, and she will be speaking. Uh, her, her speech will be released as she begins speaking. So we'll have all the head headlines flashing at that time, a time of low liquidity uh, after the United States closes and just before Tokyo opens, okay? Um, and then we have the Japanese current account, which did have some impact. Let's see if it's uh, negative. And a speech by Esther George. She's the hawk, the soul person, the sole voter that voted for rate hike in March. Now it's after the Fed's meeting minutes. Uh, let's see what she says about that. Okay. 
Um, yeah, so Jake was out with me with some beer. Actually, there was a nice beer festival here a month ago, and we did have tokens. Uh, that's called the Barcelona Beer Festival, but don't worry if you come around. There are more beer festivals. Um, a question from Jax. I think the yen and the Swiss franc are on the phone figuring out a way to stop the bleeding. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's no conspiracy theory. We know, for example, that Draghi and Yellen were talking in February. Okay, so I'm sure we also have communications between all central bankers. I'm sure they're tearing off their hair. Luckily, I don't have much hair to tear off. So anyway, I'm sure that they were a bit um, um, uh, trying to work together. Remember, the Swiss economy is smaller and there are many interests in the Swiss economy, the secrecy of the Swiss banking system. Uh, so if Switzerland does it, it's acceptable. If Japan does it, US politicians and everywhere uh, uh, begin uh, preaching them. And of course, they preach China. So Japan has less room. It's also a much bigger economy. It's the world's third largest economy. So any intervention is much more significant. OK? Um, uh, yeah, pound bounced off at 140.50, but I feel support will be lost soon. Yeah, I totally agree. So we did have one breakdown. Proof to be false, proof to be messy on uh, pound dollar. Yeah. Um, and that was yesterday. Now we're attempting to break down again. I, my, I'm my, i bearish on the pound. So far, my bearishness on the pound has proved itself quite well in <laughs> against the euro and the yen, and the yen, but not, not so much against the dollar because the dollar is also um, sliding. Um, so yeah, uh, next level of support 140, just a round number, 139.50, 138.80, and of course, 138.40. Okay, uh, another comment here, uh, some news from Sinatra, uh, board member Mario Draghi event participation by the president in a meeting at the Council of the State in Lisbon, Portugal. It says participation at a speech, oh, thanks for that. And uh, Sinatra here puts a link to the ECB's website. Uh, yeah. So we have it all here. Uh, 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 so we heard Peter Pratt. He already spoke out. Uh, Vitor Constancio talked in Brussels in a different event. Uh, Benoit Coeur will speak also today. French member in um, Frankfurt. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, the meeting minutes and yeah, no specific time for druggy speech. Anyway, quite a few have lots of members and they do spend a lot of time talking. Anyway, thanks for that. Uh, as far as I know, he is supposed to speak. He is supposed to. Uh, give some statements okay so it's not do you even like swiss cheese uh yes i do not too much of it i spent a few days in switzerland last year and i had fondue and raclette and whatever they call it there it was good of course not in large quantities um anyway <laughs> a more serious question um anyway let's look again at charts and I guess it's time for the wrap up. And uh, once again, I apologize for the technical issues we had with starting the show uh, 20 minutes late. Uh, except my apologies. Apparently, a restart of my computer helped. And um, yeah, anyway, the show, the full length of the show as usual will be available as well as the wrap up. Okay. So this is the wrap up for the live market open for April 7th. It's Thursday. Uh, we had basically a big sell off of the US dollar around the meeting minutes. Um, and most importantly, a big uh, surge of the Japanese yen. Nobody is afraid of the Bank of Japan or the Ministry of Finance in Tokyo. And we have the yen surging across the board. Okay. 
Uh, meeting minutes show that that two wanted the hike, not only Esther George, the voting single voting member. She'll speak later today. That basically most of them are not in a rush. There was a clear divide between the Hawks and the Doves. The Doves are clearly in control, and also a big divide on how they see the U.S. economy, which is relatively positive. But their big, big worries are from the global economy. Okay, less emphasis on inflation. The U.S. dollar fell before that and also afterwards. We heard that the Bank of Japan is talking about acting, but so far nobody takes them seriously. Many lines in the sand uh, turned into quicksand. And also the ECB has a little bit of influence. Uh, Peter Pratt, member of the ECB, said that measures could be calibrated, uh, which means we could uh, uh, do more. Okay, uh, so uh, today we have light morning then we have the ecb meeting minutes that meeting that they introduced a huge stimulus package but said that they will not do, do more let's see how divided they are how worried they are u.s jobless claims as usual on thursday somewhere after that uh, sometime after that we have mario draghi speaking uh, we don't have an exact time um u.s consumer credit at eight and more importantly perhaps a speech by Janet kelly at half past nine a conference of four chairs of the Fed. Um, she'll probably be dovish as usual. I think a dovish stance is priced in. Of course, given her last two speeches, uh, she can only surprise by being hawkish, but that's of course unlikely. A Japanese current account and a speech by Esther George close the day. Um, and we'll of course talk about these two speeches uh, tomorrow and um, other stuff. And tomorrow, and the preview for next week. Let's look a bit at the charts in this wrap up. So, Euro dollar got closer to the 114.60 level, uh, which was the post crash high of uh, last year, about a year ago. And it's retreating from these levels at the moment. So, we're seeing some kind of small recovery for the US dollar. Um, for the pound, uh, we reached support at 140.50. Um, 140 is was already reached yesterday. It's further support resistance at 141.75. Dollar yen, as I said, wow, this is unbelievable. It just keeps digging lower and lower. No stopping for the yen. 108.55, 108.51 was the low. I said it wasn't uh, the end of the story. Uh, there is now some talk that uh, the ECB will intervene. Uh, sorry, the Bank of Japan will intervene when. The pair reaches 105. Uh, that's a long way to go. So far, it's only job owning, and I think they're afraid to catch a falling knife. Um, Canadian dollar uh, riding on higher oil prices thanks to a draw in oil inventories. Currently 130.74, just under resistance at 130.80. Next resistance 131.70. It's becoming a bit weaker. 130.20 is stronger resistance support at 130. Uh, the dollar uh, didn't break above 76.40 and now sliding back to the downside. Uh, Aussie dollar is not the strongest at the moment. Uh, I did enjoy the US dollar's weakness yesterday. And the Kiwi dollar, uh, that's actually looks a bit better. It climbed above 68.20. Uh, now it's about to fall back down. Um, we're seeing some kind of US dollar recovery okay so i think we covered uh everything in this wrap up uh exciting days in markets especially if you're trading the yen uh maybe just before we go just show you this chart um of a pound yen extending it the fall okay quite a big crash it traded held up nicely above the previous support line of 156.10 uh, sorry uh, 140, 154.66, and boom, it crashed. All right, so that's certainly a big mover, the dragon, the Gepi. All right, so that's it for today. Once again, I apologize for the late start. Try to, uh, well, I don't know exactly what to do to mitigate this, but do my best that it will not happen again. Thank you, everybody, for the big, big patience and for coming. You can, of course, see the uh, recording of the show and uh, the wrap-up on fx3.com. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I wish everybody a safe and successful trading day in markets. 
and uh, see you tomorrow as usual on Friday we'll do a preview for the next week's events yeah thank you very much Adinda for uh, helping out trying to find a solution uh, yeah yeah thank you very much um, and yeah so see you tomorrow thank you and bye bye